Not that long ago, universities were only expected to do one thing, well, two things, uh, basically. Teach people, make them better producers in the economy and better human beings, and do research in a specific field, whether it be mathematics or philosophy or whatever it was. And most of the discourse took place between universities. So philosophy professors at one university would talk to philosophy professors at other universities. But more and more, universities are being asked to do, to play a more active role in society. And by and large, universities have taken up that responsibility. They've rolled up their sleeves, and they're very happy to jump into the different debates. And so we have now universities playing all kinds of roles. They're acting as a portal for immigrants, they're creating innovations for economic diversification, they're creating entrepreneurs, and they're even helping to solve endemic social issues like addiction, homelessness, uh, income inequities, uh, drug abuse, etc. And a recent trend, at least in North America, is that universities are more and more moving downtown. They're trying to get out of this uh, image that they have of being ivory towers, uh, dis divorced from the rest of society, to play more of a role into helping solve the issues in society. Uh, it brings them closer to their constituents, which could include the business community, civil, civil society, politicians and public servants, uh, the disadvantaged, and the public at large, who are also known as taxpayers. So it gets universities much closer to all of these people. And in this province, we are Memorial University of Newfoundland. The of is really important. We've had, for, since our existence, a special relationship with our province. So we have always been, we've always tried to be as close to our, the public as possible, but we can do more. And so we're, we're, we, have, we are always conscious of, of reaching more outside the university, not just focusing on our students and our faculty and stuff, but also to the public at large. Now, it looks easy in theory to move a university downtown, but there's all kinds of challenges in minefields. And um, luckily, uh, other universities have done this already in the past and, and can show us, uh, can give us a few ideas as to how we can do things here in this province. And uh, we have with us today a person whose uh, scholarly studies are in this field, about, uh, partly in this field, mm. about how uh, universities have moved downtown and what have been the challenges and the benefits and all that. Uh, professor Mike Hefferon is the Pro Vice Chancellor Engagement and Professor of Property and Development at the University of Sunshine Coast in Australia, as well as adjunct professor at the Queenlands Institute of Technology. And I think the kangaroos on the title should have a signal to you that Australia was involved here. Prior to those roles, he was for a long time the executive director for state development in the Queensland government with responsibility for regional development and many of the government's property assets and properties and projects. These included major precinct redevelopments, a number of which involved major universities. He has a PhD Masters of Applied Science, and Postgraduate Management Qualifications. He is, a, he is a registered urban and rural valuer, a fellow of the Australian Property Institute, the Urban Development Institute of Australia, Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors, and the Australian Institute of Company Directors. He is immediate past president of the Queensland Division of the Australian Property Institute, director of the Sunshine Coast Business Council and of Regional Development Australia, and is the chair of the Sunshine Coast Innovation Centre. So I think you'll agree with me that he is amply qualified to speak on the topic that he's going to be talking about today. So please welcome Mike Heffern. Good. Thanks, Mike. Good. The uh, welcome and for spending your time with us today. There was a war because we've been through a number of these as we'll talk about shortly. Um, and each one's paid to come here. Um, you says, "Oh, look, you know, I know all about this uh, battery and and uh, all of that." But I think some of the examples here, at least, uh, will be handy to Memorial and hopefully to the community. Um, but I do uh, accept this role as as somebody from outside who hopefully uh, has got some experiences that can uh, can help. Um, yeah, I have to prove that I'm Australian, Australian so there's kangaroos. That, that's actually on our campus, and they're there pretty well all the time. That, that's an undergraduate line there, and you can see he's less focused than the blessed kangaroos are. But uh, if it's not kangaroos or koalas, you have to sort of wonder if it's Australia, I suppose. Anyway, uh, 
Look, today, uh, if it's okay, I'll speak for about uh, 20 minutes, uh, but then sort of open it to the uh, floor after that. And, and the matters that I just wanted to uh, well, put to you are, first of all, this sort of move that a lot of uh, universities are making, uh, you know, off their campus, and hey, what's really behind that? Um, a, a little about urban development, and I think universities have underrated their importance uh, in many areas in, uh, in that. Uh, making sure that we've got the story straight about when we uh, go out. Uh, a few case studies that you might find interesting, I'll just go through very quickly. Um, but in what we've seen anyway, uh, there are some common themes. Uh, that all the projects are so different, but there's some common threads to that. And if I'd be a bit bold, just to make a few uh, initial observations of the battery. So we'll just sort of work, work through that. Um, for 500 years or so, we've been building universities that look like that. Um, and their the statements of permanency that we're different, as Mike was saying, you know, we're, we're that little bit remote, which proves our difference. Uh, our buildings look different, and we've got a certain status. I think universities have got to be careful that they don't lose that. I'm not saying that we, we race out and build buildings like those anymore, but that you know they are different. And in going downtown, we've got to make sure that we don't lose the core values that the university is about. Otherwise, it becomes the the tail wagging the dog to some extent. Um, but for all of all of that, and the other sort of implied thing on that was, well, we're a bit distant, but could you leave some money on the stump there and, and we'll get it tonight and we'll take it away and we'll do nice things with it. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> whether they're good times or bad, I don't know, but they're certainly different now. And in contemporary times, as Mike was saying, and it's not just MUN and it's not just Canada. I mean, this, this is happening all over the world. There's, there's this need to be... We were always, we believe, relevant and value-adding, but now to, to overtly uh, do that and to get on the front foot uh, about that. And that almost always takes the form of uh, some geographic change or, or a, a built form to identify what we're doing. Um, and that can be done in a whole different series of ways. I don't have to go into this, but we can sort of uh, build a whole new different building on one of our campuses. We can go and build a whole new campus. We can do, as I'm involved in at the moment, where our university's, uh, our Queensland government is building a $1.8 billion hospital just very close to us and we've got a $63 million uh, medical facility and training facility going into that. So sometimes our outreach in, in buildings is integrated with others. But, and most of those are sort of demand driven. But there's some that we do uh, that are, are small satellites um, that are specific and purpose-driven uh, purpose uh, in the strategic interests of the university. And I suggest that the battery is one of those. I mean, it's not as if great slabs of the university are ever going to migrate down there. And as I was saying uh, earlier today, there's a, a little lesson in that too, that... Uh, Whoever goes down there, it's very important that the whole of that group go down. Um, you know, if you're going to have your MBAs down there, then that group should go down if you start stretching it between the two organisers, two sites. Uh, it can be end up pretty uh, confusing. Um, but as I said before, it's got to be about what it does. I mean, it's a wonderful opportunity. Rob and I... I've only been to St John's once before, three or four years ago, and it was before this was ever talked about. And you know, I said to Rob, I remember, hey, what's that white building up there? You know, it's a real sort of uh, statement uh, building. But for all of that, we're, you know, it's got to be form follows uh, uh, it, function over form, or if you like, uh, form follows the function. So we've got to think about why we're doing it, and then think about the built form. But having said that, too. I think the, the, the groups that go down there are going to evolve in certain ways because of that physical environment. As, as Churchill said, you know, we shape the buildings, but after, after that, the buildings start to shape us. And I think that's true of, a, of an outpost like that. Um, but we're going to be doing different things down there. And it's not going to be the same the way we develop it, the way we manage it, the way we use it is going to be different to here and, and I think the acceptance of 
we're doing something new and maybe we'll have to let go a little bit on what we normally do uh, is uh, pretty important to that. I just wanted to make a, a point too about uh, something that universities under, like government, universities sometimes overstate some of the things they do and never realise and understate uh, other areas. Um, and I think what, one of the areas that uh, they do understate their importance is their importance in the city and, and to urban environments. So historically we've probably underrated that and in fact we've, we've liked that. <laughs> Let's just move away from and don't take responsibility in any of these areas. And obviously it's of great importance. I mean, Mun uh, in, in your region as our university is, is probably you know, second or third biggest employer and, and it's got all those sort of issues. It's a large landowner and constructor. It's financially sound, which if you're talking about urban development, <laughs> you know, we take it for granted, but let me tell you out there, it's not like that. Um, that it, one of the good things that we offer to, to the development community is that um, our demands and our funding sources are different to, to the private sector. So often we're building and developing in times when the, the, the market is quiet and, and they really appreciate that. We should, and I bold the should there, be innovative, that, that we should be applying our expertise and the way we do business to that physical environment that we're building. We're, <coughs> pardon me, as you see in a couple of examples in a minute, that we're normally big enough to have a scale when we do things to not only help us, but actually to help the vicinity uh, uh, around uh, and the good part is too, uh, I mean, uh, it's, in property language, it's anchor tenant. That, I mean, we bring with us an anchor tenancy, you know, um, and we bring with us the day we arrive, uh, faculty and, and students and the buzz and the identity and the culture that comes sort of with us and, and something that we gloss over. Uh, but uh, it is, is critically important in some of the uh, cases. And also that we've got a philosophical uh, position that does does go, go beyond the commercial, although money is very important to everyone, of course, but also it's a very, very long-term view that often you don't find uh, in, in urban development. But the downside, not the downside, but people also have to recognise that, that we are conservative and, and proudly so. And, and as in any experimentation that any of us would do, we're a bit wary of anything new and we're not going to grab it as some uh, uh, entrepreneur might grab an opportunity and run with it. Um, secondly, that inside an, a university um, uh, there's going to be diverse views. In fact, that's probably put it at Miley. I read a book, <laughs> I was reading a book recently where they described a, a, a university as organised anarchy and I, I think there might be, if you ask a dean, they'd probably accept that that's a, a fair assumption. Um, but, you know, so it's going to take us a while to just state ideas and say that's what we want to do. Um, there's a structure in decision making that's uh, are not recognised by the, the, the private sector. Um, and sometimes that's even statutory, as you know, we're all uh, uh, ruled by uh, Acts of Parliament. The other thing that when we go out into projects like this, people don't understand our concepts of risk. Well, you know, man's not going to go broke. It doesn't matter what happens. You know, and so th th that ultimate deterrent of, of, of going bankrupt d doesn't occur. But that's not as if we don't face risk. We face terrible risks uh, of um, identity and um, uh, corporate embarrassment and things like that, which weigh very, very heavily, I'm sure, on on your uh, your vice chancellor. So I think. There needs to be this understanding from us looking out, but also from the private sector who are going to deal with us in any of these sort of things, that we're a, an extremely valuable uh, partner to have, but we're a different sort of partner. Um, so I won't take too long here, but because some of the things I've already touched on is, is Mun embarks on this fantastic project, and what I should said, uh, what I should have said was that in the little bit I know about it, I mean, it, it's, it, it's a fantastic opportunity. And I mean, I think the, the university is to be applauded for just, you know, for taking that, in inverted commas, risk of acquiring that. I mean, the, the amount of property and its identity and, and uh, 
apparently for the price that it's been bought for. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, remarkable. Um, but on the projects I'm going to talk to you about in a moment, I mean, one of the clear thing, the things that comes across more than anything, I think, uh, is to get that story straight at the, at the very start. And the next few months in this project are going to be really critical just to, to conceptualise what it is that we're doing that doing there. The core units are um, going to be in it. And if we came back in 20 years' time, What's that thing going to be? Now, we, we shouldn't be so prescriptive to say, well, it's exactly, it's going to be this, this, and this. But we, it should look basically, or, or should have the feel or the utility uh, of certain elements that, that are, are going to be set now. Uh, and I think we've got to get that part right. And from what I've heard, we're almost there. Uh, perhaps not, not, uh, not quite. Um, it needs a, a patron, so something different like that uh, definitely needs that. Um, we've all got to be prepared for the long haul. There's a project I'm going to show you in a minute that's been a remarkable success, got all sorts of awards. It's 10 years old and it's still only 75% finished. And that's the sort of thing, you know, it's just an area our approach. We, we started on a journey uh, here. Um, we need to be realistic. Um, about uh, how people are going to be involved. Uh, and as I said before, it's a different role for universities, so we have to let go of it. I just want to move on now, and I'm just aware of the time, but, um, and I'll skim through these. Uh, I'll, I'll leave these slides with Rob, and people can consider them. I've got my email if anybody is interested. But a number of universities around the world have been doing this, and there's five in, in um, in uh, Australia, that uh, I'd like to mention that we've investigated, um, and we'll just <laughs> that are there. Um, a couple are in Brisbane, uh, one in Sydney, and one in Adelaide, and they're, they're diverse, but there's some common themes through them. Um, the first one is fantastic. It, it, it's just been this is the one that's been ten years in the making. As you can see, it's nothing like the battery. It's actually a, 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 a new urbanism precinct uh, that they've done very close to the CBD, as you can see uh, up there. And this was a coalition between um, the University of Technology, QUT, in, in uh, Brisbane, where I'm an adjunct, and the Department of Housing. Ten years on, I did a retrospective on, on this to, just uh, fairly recently. Um, one important thing is that in going into partnerships sometimes, which are necessary here, uh, a university has to be very careful who it partners with, uh, you know, uh, that it's somebody of equal standing and, and uh, equal amounts to, to lose if something goes wrong. Um, but without going into great detail here, um, the learnings here, is, it was opportunistic, exactly the same as you guys buying that thing on the hill. It, this was an old... Um, army base which uh, included heritage assets and the, the, the uh, it went back so so long that the Queensland Army, we had a Queensland Army, actually mustered there to send troops to the Boer War in South Africa. That's, you know, that's how, how old the site is. But anyway, it was vacant and, and um, the partners sort of uh, joined up on it. Um, really, the, the key thing is that, that uh, third point, that they, they got an urban designer in who understood what both parties wanted and, and they spent a long time, but they got an excellent plan. If you go back today, that plan has been uh, amended twice, but only at the edges. I mean, it still stands today, um, if you can say. Um, one thing that they did, they had the money to do it, again, this is a question for Mun, that they decided they were going to do a quality thing and they were going to get in and do the infrastructure first uh, and they were going to pay up front for it. So everybody knew what it was going to be. Now, that's really nice if you can do it uh, and, and provide so much certainty. But uh, there's a temptation here, if the money's short, that there's a bit of a cosmetic job done on it and it, it, it underestimates what the place could be. But you know, it's easy for me to say that, that there's uh, a lot of money involved. Um, what you're going to find in a site like this, I just want to jump to the last point, I won't go through them all, um, but you can often get... Um, really good community groups who want to join you, okay? Because there's a lot of space there and Mun might not use it all straight away. 
but you, you, if you've got a good plan, you can then nicely and diplomatically resist people who don't belong. Now, there might be some people that you want to come in, and that's fine if you do, but you know, it, it will sit there with a big target on it for so many community groups, and some of them deserve to be there, but you know, just be careful because once you get them in, <laughs> you, know, you look like an absolute villain if one day you say, hey, you've got to go now because we want the space. So you've got to be very careful of that one. Um, just a few more uh, here. Um, the one at the top is important. That it, it, this will be Mun's place. But if you brand it too heavily, you know, Mun, pe pe you and I sort of work in universities and we're not scared of them. But the, the, most of the community are, are quite sensitive to coming to universities. Hey, this is different and I don't know my way around and, and all that sort of stuff. So if it's overly branded Mun, People say, well, that's just part of the university. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll stay away from it. So you, you just got to be a bit subtle uh, on that one. Uh, some of these other things that we've talked about before, um, we got ripped off at, at Kelvin Grove because the council, even though we had our own planning, as you guys do, the council convinced us that, you know, hey, you guys say you're environmentally sensitive. You've got a good bus service. You can walk to the CBD, cut the car parks. And we accepted that, okay? And yeah, it's not very far, it's only a sort of, uh, you know, a couple of kilometres. But let me tell you, in the middle of summer in Brisbane, <laughs> nobody <laughs> walks a couple of kilometres. Um, and the, the, the businesses and the, the interactions that we did with, with industry, they, they wanted to come to see us, or we wanted to go and see them, and they came by car. Now, you know, whether it's environmentally friendly or whatever, that side up there, as I see it anyway, is a destination. It's, it's close to the city, but that's a, a, a pretty severe walk up the hill. Um, so people are going to drive there. And, uh, you know, whether we like it or not, the car accommodation is going to be pretty critical on that side. Uh, at Kelvin Grove, we lost incubator tenants. I think there's going to be an incubator up there. We lost incubator tenants because they said, you know, people want to come to see us, but there's all these these cars everywhere, and and too many students, and and so that we we bailed out of it. Um, yeah. So and, and some of those other matters I've talked about before. So I'll leave that one go. A second one, and this is an option for uh, up at the battery. I don't know that it's a good one, but that's up to you guys to say. A sandstone university, the University of Adelaide, one of the best universities in Australia, did a radical thing. You know, it, it sits in, in a wonderful campus on, on uh, uh, West Terrace, right in the middle of the CBD, and you know, parks all around the whole bit. Um, they went out and bought a factory, a factory site. Not all that you can see there, but most of it in a really run-down area, and it was a radical thing for them to do. Um, but what they did, they didn't actually refurbish it to a high level. They they, they just tarted it up, made sure that it was suitable for use. And, and as I think an architect would call, it was loose fit. You know, they would just sort of um, let a whole range of people in, in what was pretty cheap accommodation. Um, and they put some of their research centres in and areas like that. Um, and it was a cheap way to do it. And, and it has been a very effective way. So I, also, I, I think the university here will want to make a big physical statement about that building. There are other options. You, you, you can you know, just do it up to an extent that makes it work. And that one did particularly because when you go in it, it's such an expansive place that you know, people who, who don't uh, mix together really do. You, know, you walk around, it's like laneways and, and there's a, a really neat sort of coffee shop uh, in an old building and there's a lot of interaction. I, I would suspect that that's going to be a difficult site for your various component parts of the university to mix in. You know, they're, they're sure, there'll be a bar and all those sort of things, but people will enter the building and leave it from different sources. So you know, as for, for building uh, university community there, I think it, it will have challenges. And they're all over, it can be overcome, of course. But, um, uh, and that one there really re did rejuvenate that surrounding area. It's done a remarkable job just by being there. And even though I think that area where you are is an area that's going up in any case, I think having that university there and a use defined for that old 
building. Um, you know, we'll, we'll do so much for it. Anyway, I'll, I'll move on quickly. Um, I don't want to spend too long on this. This, this was a, a hugely expensive project in Redfern, which is the toughest part of uh, Sydney. Again, you could walk to to the Sydney CBD from it, but you wouldn't be going to. You certainly wouldn't do it overnight. Um, but this, um, the, the Commonwealth Government through a Better Cities program threw millions and millions and millions of dollars at this. And there were four universities involved uh, in it, and it went broke. I mean, as, as much as, it, like, it, it didn't actually foreclose, but the, much to their embarrassment, the New South Wales Government had to send in Coopers to actually run it for a couple of years until they could get a financial footing back on it. It just cost so much to do it. And it was led by some just really wonderful people. They were absolute zealots for it. But you know, the money was just sort of draining, draining, draining. And, and, and another big issue with this one was that there were four universities involved. And that can be good <laughs> and that can be bad. But in this case, they were all mates together until the, the trouble started. And then they said, oh, well, yeah, we're like, this is a cooperative, but this isn't us. So they all sort of gently sort of stepped away. So I think a lesson for this is um, that uh, this, at the end of the day, there's got to be somebody responsible for this project. And it's, it's got to be at a very high level in the university. If, if, you know, if, if it's uh, responsibility uh, uh, diffused, then, then you know, uh, anything can happen with it. Uh, remarkably, though, at the end of the day, 20 years on, it's now incredibly successful. Uh, but what happened was they got a couple of anchor tenants in there. They got uh, one of the big... Uh, Television networks put their studio in and their headquarters. They put a film school and they've got a couple of research corporations. And now it's just fantastic. And it's actually now quite a safe area. It's a, it's a good area. They have really lifted it. So uh, you know, if you don't worry about the money, this has been a wonderful success. But unfortunately, people worry about money. I just got a, I just got a, uh, a couple more. This one, I think, um, different sort of building, but it's got a lot in common with what you're doing here. And this is just an exquisite building at the end of the main street in uh, Queen Street in Brisbane. Um, and it's the old customs house. And the, um, that actually, those photos don't do it justice. And at the back, it rolls down on grass down to the river, all that sort of stuff. University of Queensland is about a distance pretty similar to Munn to, to your, your centre here. So they're out of it a little bit, and they decided they wanted to come to town. They purchased this property um, from the Commonwealth Government, and th their foundation restored a fair bit of it. But uh, there's two important, a couple of important issues here that, that Munn might like to consider in a property like that. One is that they accepted that it was a sunk cost. Okay, they said, we're going to go to town, we want a presence there, this is a fantastic building. It's going to cost us a lot to, to do it up, but we're going to bite the bullet and we're going to do that. And then the operations of the building are taken as a cost centre and um, they have to stand up on that. But what happens sometimes is they say, oh, look, you know, we spent whatever it was there, $6 million or something doing it up. Now where's our return on investment? And that's a reasonable question for the CFO to ask, but if that's what you're doing it for, then you, you don't start because there, there will be sunk costs that you know you'll have to look at uh, qualitative measures to see what's back. But wonderful things have happened in that building. I mean, they, they've got um, yeah a lot of business groups now meet there. They would have never gone out to UQ because it was just too far. But now they go into there. Um, th they did run the MBA courses at in that building, but it was really too small. For them, and it was one of these split things, so they don't do that anymore. But they do a lot of their professional development training and or a lot of their interface issues, and they would say that that's a fantastic thing. The last thing about that, which I think might be interesting for you guys, is that they did not put an academic in charge of the operations of it. And in fact, they've had it's about 10 years since they've had it. They've had two very successful managers there, and they've got them out of the um, the hospitality industry. Okay. And so these people really understand how to run 
functions and to invite people and all that sort of stuff. There's a couple of restaurants in there too. Um, it, now, it's not that it gets away from what the university is about, but the, the nature of people you want to run these sort of organisations, with respect, probably aren't in this room and they're not me either. You know, that you really do need people who understand how these things uh, work and interact. So they're the points I think that uh, we've, we've made. And, and also, that one's got a champion. There's an executive in UQ who's responsible for it. Because if you let them go, and nothing against faculties, you know, they're there to do an important job. But if you just say to a faculty, hey, look, that's now operating, it's yours, you know, battery, there's business faculty, you go, guys go and look after that. It, it, it won't reach its full potential because it'll be, as we all know, inside faculties there's a lot going on and, and looking after iconic buildings <laughs> ain't one of them. Um, I just wanted to leave you with the, the, um, the final of these uh, examples and it's not a university, um, it, it, but it's a remarkable project. Uh, it doesn't look like anything, it's in fact because you can't really take a photo of it, but it's about a 5,000 square metre property. It's very big. Um, but it's got uh, knowledge-based companies in it. It was an old chocolate factory, in fact, it's called Plumridge House, they were Plumridge Chocolates. Okay? Um, and the people who developed it knew nothing about knowledge industries or whatever. Uh, and in fact, they had come from high-end renovations of houses, you know, of, of you know, the best suburbs in Brisbane and dealing with the the matrons with plenty of money and plenty of ideas um, and they were used to being um, very connected with, their, with the people who, who they were doing houses up for. And I bring it up because they did a few things in there that had for the sorts of tenants either from, in, uh, from the university or even from outside who might go into that building. They were incredibly clever. They, they, First of all, as you can see from that right-hand uh, photo, uh, reasonably well, they really spent time on um, the renovations. They, they stripped down these floors and found the most magnificent uh, hardwood floors and they polished them up. And even though, again, that building's many years old now, they've always maintained it. You know, and and they've, they've made the most of the architectural features and they've put in quite eclectic artwork and the whole bit. Um, and so they are really welcoming of the people who were there and really listen to them. And in fact, the same little uh, gangs of, of workers they used to have fixing up these, these mansions, they brought them in and they fuss around the building and they, they listen to the tenants. Um, and also with fit-outs, they do the fit-outs for free uh, on the basis that Everybody says they want different things, but in fact, they all. When you listen to them, they want the same things. I don't know with the battery whether it's going to be done all in one hit or progressively. But this is a classic case where these folks who were building it had very little money, but because they involved the tenants in what they were doing, these tenants put up, it, nice as it is, the back of it was a war zone. You know, I mean, they, they've just got bulldozers and all things going on. But the tenants actually put up with it because they knew what was going on and because they felt involved in it. And like this is, again, if we can transfer a really way out example back to the battery, your communication strategy, if you tell people what's going on and particularly your neighbours what are going on there, I mean, you're halfway ha home. And I think that's something that big organisations like universities sometimes forget. Um, so there's just the... Uh, the examples based on that, and I won't go into those. I think I've touched on, on most of those. So, just coming to the end of what I wanted to say, um, uh, we've found anyway in these investigations elsewhere, and I suspect they're the same here, is that you know, th there are some general rules of, of how these things work or don't work, and just a few of them. Most important is to say there's a general rule, and the first one says there's no rule. <laughs> Um, but each one is unusual and really has to be thought through um, in depth. The bleeding bloody obvious is often 
uh, not uh, what it seems. So it's, it's tailor-made, but I haven't seen one that's done well. Uh, well, sorry, that's the third point. The second point is that site identity really helps. You know, if you're going in the university's name, going to a place that everybody says, oh, the battery, yeah, I know that. Yeah, that, that that's not to be underrated. Um, the point I was going to make is that I've never seen one of these that's been a, 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 a true success that hasn't had that, as I said before, that, that good plan and people sort of sticking with it and knowing what the plan is. Um, and finally, uh, you know, did everybody get ready because this is a long haul? And, and so therefore a scenario planning approach is really uh, important to it. Um, I'll, I'll risk it now, as a two-day expert. Uh, last time I knew what the battery was, now I've sort of walked through it and that, uh, but I would, uh, if you wouldn't mind, present a few uh, comments. Uh, like it's certainly iconic, you know, hey, if you're going to do this, <laughs> do it there. That's a terrific opportunity. Um, I think for those of us who, who don't deal in, in assets and property, um, before I actually walked through it, some folks had said, oh, that place at Rapid Warren, it's a mess, you know, it's old. Well, you know, a, a property that hasn't been looked after, which that one hasn't been, obviously, for some years, and then locked up for six months or so, you know, I mean, it's, it's a mess. Um, and then we walk into it and think, oh, God, did we really design things like that in the 1970s, you know? <laughs> did people use that much orange, for God's sake? <laughs> um, uh, but a lot of it um, is cosmetic. Now, I'm not getting away from the fact that, you know, there's service issues and as soon as you start digging into services in old properties, you know, you can get the checkbook out. But, um, like, fundamentally, that, that's a sound building. There's a f only a few areas where water gets in, you know, there's very few uh, cracks in the thing, so, you know, it's pretty good. Um, interestingly enough, too, isn't it, that, a lot of those components, oh sorry if I can just go back a bit, I mean nothing beats that location and that view and, and the uh, opportunities that uh, come with that. Um, interestingly enough, a, a lot of those components actually align with, what, even though it was a, there as a hotel, reasonably align with what we would want. You know, accommodation, not quite how we want it, but yeah, it's there. I mean, those large uh, conference areas, <laughs> I never thought I'd say it for a university, but there might be too many conference areas in that uh, uh, space. But uh, that's uh, remarkable. Um, the next one is that uh, it will be a destination for people. Uh, and so I had to bring up cars again, but you know, that's, I, I've seen that uh, really break wonderful projects or really uh, uh, diminish from them. Um, even though this, the proximity of the city is so important, uh, your access to those public areas and to the geo centre across the road uh, should not be underrated. I think that that's just a fantastic opportunity. So yours is the destination on to other uh, destinations. Um, the next one is um, a, a communication strategy. Already I understand that people are saying, oh, well, the university bought that and look, it's just sitting there. What the hell are they doing? And yet you, if you can explain just simply to, to the community, hey, this is taking time, but we're going to get it right. This is where we're going with the thing. That's as much as they have to, have to know. And I hear also there's some criticism from the uh, council that they've lost um, tax revenue which is probably true, but I mean, if in fact this works, it will so raise that area that, you know, they'll be sending you tax dividends or, or spotters fees or something. <laughs> I wouldn't wait for it. Um, because it's long term, it really does lend itself to scenario planning. And what I mean is there's some things that we know and some things we don't know. Uh, the things we know we can work on, but we don't cut off the options for those other things that might happen. What happens with that pool area? I don't know already, there's a few ideas. But if it takes time and you just seal that area off, uh, you'll have to sort of probably put some services through it to uh, link with the rest of the building. But it's, it's fine, you know, you just don't have to do everything at once. And, and sometimes doing nothing for a couple of years is the best thing you can do. You know, we're, sometimes we're forced, don't we? Oh, we've done that, so we've got to really rip in now and, and do everything. And I'd suggest that that's not the case. Um, 
And um, as I see it, where you are right now is that the, the, the people who are going in there, there's a lot of good work being done with them. It's not quite finished, but they sort of know what they want and, and you have to always control demand going into those because people say, oh, there's lots of space, you know, I can use this space. Hey, but you've got to renovate that space and that's going to be expensive. So you've still got to have a bit of you know, fair control on that. I also understand that the facilities folks have got a good handle on the building and what needs to be done sort of physically. But I would suggest that between those two, there's still that, that statement, still that narrative that's needed, hey, this is exactly what we're doing, these are the things that we know, and this is where we're going over the next little while. And I think that's very close, but it's probably, I'd suggest, a couple of months uh, uh, off. And that really means, you know, a, 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 a short, but quite clear concept um, and functional plan for the place. I think it's all there, but it's sort of just all over the table at the moment and needs a bit of consolidation. And I'll leave you with a... <laughs> it's an Australian presentation, so there's to be a, a koala there. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike.